Hi, Jaden. Oh, uh, how you doing? Great, great. So tell us, you had a scrimmage, a real scrimmage, live pads, new offense on, on Saturday. How'd it go? I went good. I mean, uh, it was a short amount of time of the period that we had the live tackling. I feel like other than that, we got out there as a team. Did you get hit? Nah, not at all. <laughs> not yet, huh? I won't be getting hit till November 7th. Okay, good. What, uh, just talk about, obviously, again, a, a new offensive coordinator. You've done all the, this sort of thing. When you actually get a chance to put it in play in the field, how did it go? I mean, it went well. You know, just uh, there's certain things that we have to um, clean up overall as an offense. But, you know, Coach is doing his thing, making the, the right call, the right personnel groupings, uh, just keeping the defense on their toes of, of what we do here um, as an offense. So just, uh, those are the main things that we've been fo uh, we've been preaching on, we've been focusing on. But there's some stuff that we got to clean up operational-wise. Mm -hmm. Jaden, obviously, you, you look, uh, Eno's gone, Brandon Ayuk's gone. I mean, do you feel – there's going to be more focus on you now because people know you this year. Yeah. I mean, um, I would say I just coming back as a starting quarterback for ASU, you know, uh, there's going to be eyes on me. People are going to focus on me, but we still got other guys that, that are coming back and new guys that come in that can make plays, you know, and just make a name for themselves. And that's the main thing that we've been talking about uh, for me, uh, talking to the receiver group, the running back group, but just who's going to make the plays. I know everybody's always asking the question of, who's going to replace Eno, who's going to replace Brandon uh, with the production. But I feel like just as an offense together, there's going to be guys that just step up and make plays. Mm -hmm. Who do you think they are? Uh, you know, just receiver-wise, you know, the three running backs that we have, um, Rashad Wright, Daniel Nagata, uh, Diamantre Channel, you know, those guys, those, that's a good uh, group as a running back. You know, we got Frank Darby coming back. I feel like Johnny Wilson is going to be a good one. You know, we got Ricky Pearsall, uh, LeVon Bunkley, Shelton. We got Jordan Porter. And then even with the tight ends with Curtis Hodges and Nolan Matthews, those are guys uh, I feel like just as an offense can make a lot of plays and uh, shine in his offense. Yeah. Have you been able I – mean, obviously you have a history with Johnny, but have you been able to develop that quarterback-receiver rhythm with all of the receivers? Yeah, most definitely. You know, we're getting out there each and every day. Uh, going against the defense. So just building that time and the chemistry that we have. Uh, I played seven on seven in high school with, uh, with uh, Levine, you know, played with Johnny some, somewhat. So just those guys from back home, uh, just building a relationship with them and just keep going on from there. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit uh, uh, about you, again, with that, that bullseye on your back. Um, I've actually, Doug Haller wrote a really nice story today in The Athletic talking to a lot of your teammates and coaches, and everybody says, you're bigger. <laughs> you're yeah. stronger. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was just one thing that uh, Coach Hearn, Antonio Pierce, you know, everybody on the, the staff, uh, even the, the strength and condition staff with Joe Conley and them hard this year. Is, uh, I got to put on some more muscle. got to put on again, some more weight. So I'm able to take more hits, uh, not film as much. So that's one thing that this, this offseason I, I uh, took very seriously coming in, uh, uh, just trying to transform my body into something uh, that we can build on, just keep building on from there for, uh, future, for future things. Did you feel it by the end of the last year? Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a couple hits I took, you know, uh, way, not being as big as people wanted me to be, but I mean, being – just one thing I, I do hard myself on, I'm very happy for myself that I was available for my team last year. I uh, knew, knew when to take the necessary hits, knew when to get down, I uh, knew when to fight for extra yards. So this year, just the same thing, just being available for my team. I, I can hear Coach Herm, as you call him. I can hear him because he must have told us that 20 times last year. So I'm guessing he told you that 20,000 times, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what you always say, you know, it, his main thing is when you start running, just know when your journey is over. So that's the main thing he tells me. I just listen to him. Uh, I don't got to be out there. Go. I don't have to be Superman, you know, trying to cut back across the field, you know, just make the plays that I need, that I need to make for in order for the team to win. Is your arm stronger this year? Yeah. I mean, just putting on some more weight, you know, it just helped out a lot. You've got, what kind of throws do you notice it on? Uh, a lot. I'm, I've noticed uh, I have a lot more zip on 
the ball. You know, a lot of people say me that, tell me that. Uh, just deep balls too. You know, sometimes you know I'm overthrowing some receivers. I just it's time that we just had to build that chemistry. Uh, even Frank was saying, like he said, there's a couple times where I threw the ball. He usually last year was off the chemistry I had last year. That was on the money. Sometimes it's a little bit further. So that's just something we had to work. Yeah. The receivers coming back and telling them doing this to you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Good. Um, talk a little bit about Coach Herm. You'll, we'll use your phrase for him. All of us, I think everybody on this call knows him and understands what a personality is and his presence and his stance on so many things that have, we've all lived through. You have lived through them. What's it been like for you from in 2020 as crazy a year as this has been for you and the amount of time you spend with Coach Edwards? I mean, Coach Herm, um, he's just a great man, a great dude um, overall. Uh, always just looking out for everybody in the building, making sure everybody's okay. So, and he has a lot, he has a lot of wisdom and knowledge. That's one thing. Um, I just sit down and talk to him every morning um, and just ask him questions about how I should handle different situations because he has a lot of knowledge on and his stance on how, how he would carry himself in this situation. And then he's, he'll tell it like, and personality wise, we're, we're similar. You know, he's a the calm, collected type of a guy. Um, but when he has to get on the team, he'll get on the team. And when he does get on the team, everybody everybody hears him. They listen to him because he's so well-respected around, not just on the team, but just around everywhere in the world. So, I mean, he's just a great dude. And he's always just looking out for everybody. You've been able to talk with him about social justice and all the, the relevant issues of this year? Yeah, most definitely. We have those conversations. Um, that's one thing um, that back when he was recruiting me, uh, he told my he told my mom. He said one thing is uh, there's a lot of great coaches across the country. One thing is that they can't. Some coaches can't teach you how to be a black uh, African American person in this world. They can't teach you how to be a black man in this world. So that was one thing that stuck with me, and it, you know, just the ins and outs of everything. Um, a couple months ago, we had something, a little incident with a couple of my teammates at Whataburger. So, you know, just he was supportive of everything, you know. There's, there's times that he, he addressed it as a team of, like, we just got to be aware of what's going on in this world. We just got to always be aware of our surroundings. And he gave them uh, great information on how they, how they could carry themselves on if they, if they ever got to that situation again. Hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that, Jaden. I appreciate it. And, uh, Good luck to you, and I'm going to turn it over to Jesse. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ted. And we'll go to questions from the media now. As a reminder, please use the raise hand function uh, to get your question into the queue. And our first question will go to Michael Caratanudo. Jaden, you talk about, obviously, Frank coming back and his energy, but how big has he been? I mean, not just for you, but for the young receivers, because as we know, I mean, that secondary, that back seven is very experienced and Jason and Jack are very physical. But how has his leadership with with the receivers this year helped you and helped them as a group? Uh, his energy, his leadership has been great each and every day. I always bring the same energy that he gives out each and every day. He's the same person. So, you know, just coming in, he he took that leadership role, you know, he – Recently, just got announced a captain. So, but he, ever since last year, I uh, happened. You know, I you can have left all the the upperclassmen guys have left. He and he embraced that leadership role. Of, okay, I'm the I'm the guy that, that has to give them knowledge of how to carry themselves each and every day. So, I mean, he's always just helping out people, helping out the receiver group, and then, uh, always staying on them, holding them accountable for each and every day. And then with the secondary too. I mean, how much is that? helps your development too, because we know that they're experienced. And I mean, the games that, you know, the situations they've been in, they've gotten, you know, like you said, the waste, but bigger and physical. How has the secondary helped you guys as an offense? The uh, secondary helped out a lot. You know, those guys, uh, they challenge us each and every day, you know, Jack Jones, Chase Lucas, those guys. Um, we got Evan Fields, DeAndre Pierce, and Shark Crossbow. Those guys challenge us each and every day. Um, we're disguising different coverages, showing different techniques. Um, and just going out there and competing each and every day. So for me, going against those guys is a benefit 
uh, because those guys are very experienced. They play a lot of football, so they know a lot of different tendencies and how to disguise different things. So going against them helped us out as an offense because they'll show us one thing and then move to something else. So just competing each and every day against those guys is great for us as an offense. Thanks, Jay. Okay, next question will go to Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Hi, Jaden. Um, you play USC the first game, and obviously that's a team that most people are picking to win the South. Do you think it's an advantage for you to play them first because they're not going to have the benefit of a lot of film to watch on this new offense? I think that, that uh, does play a benefit to, our, uh, to us as a team. You know, being able to play them first, you know, they can go back and watch Boise State offense, Boise State film, uh, just to get a a, la a, a glance of what Coach Young them did recently. But you know, going up against it is uh, something different, and there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that we bring to the table. So being able to play a good team in USC first, you know, is just going to be a good one. Okay, next question will go to uh, Paul Richardson, the Sportscape. Hey, hey, Jane, last year, obviously a freshman year, no one really knew what to expect. They've scouted you. There's film on you now. What are you doing or what do you think you can bring different to the table this year so they have to, you know, have even more on tape to scout you even harder? I mean, uh just what we do within the offense, uh, being being able to make different type of throws, knowing where to go with the ball at all times, and just going out there and making plays when I need to. I feel like uh, I can elevate my game from last year, you know, being able to embrace more of a uh, the offensive role, the leadership role, of gathering the guys around so we're able to make those plays. But I just feel like me individually, um, when the play is uh, there to be made and I can make it, just go and make the play, I feel like, yeah, a lot of teams, they, they uh, have film on me. There's different ways that you can stop me, but I just feel like it's in the new offense, there's a different way you have to play us uh, and how you uh, carry your defense and game plan against us. But at the end of the day, I just feel like you just go out there and be myself. And then and then to follow up with that, last year as a freshman, kind of counting on the defense to get you guys out of the gate a little bit faster this year. This year, I would think the expectation should be equal that the defense and the offense will be expected to come out the gate equally as strong and equally as fast. Is that kind of how you guys are feeling? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, last year, we, we had a tendency of a slow start and uh, always, playing with, always playing from behind. And uh, even today, you know, Coach Herm had gotten us as an offense. If we want to be top top 20, top 14 in the country, we got to score over 30-plus uh, points a game. So that's one thing that we just were working on offense, starting off fast and be able to, sustain drives, uh, get more plays in the game, and just putting points on the board. And I know this is the thing with defense to start fast uh, as, a, as a whole in the Arizona State team. We just want to start fast. Thanks, Jay. Okay, next question will go to Jordan Ham, Sports 360 Arizona. Hey, Jaden, thanks for doing this. Um, last year, obviously, you the starter as a freshman. Uh, in Tucson, Grant Gannell got some time as well. Um, I'm just curious if if you and Grant have a relationship um, and just what, what are your thoughts on the prospect of having multiple years against him uh, in the Territorial Cup moving forward? I mean, uh, me and Grant, you know, growing, uh, in high school, we were at the opening together, uh, having those conversations. Uh, we always check up on each other here and there, uh, seeing how they're doing. But really, it's just I'm always, watch, I'm always watching everybody around the world. Uh, that play in my class, you know, um, seeing what they're doing and be able to, to see see their success and then be able to play against Greg years on now in the tutorial club is going to be great. Uh, have that competition with him and uh, we came in in the same class so be able to play against him and have that competition is going to be fun. When you look at his skill set and what he's been able to accomplish, what, what jumps out to you? I mean, uh, just the plays that he made last year, you know, UCLA thrust him uh, in that that role, you know, those late games, splitting reds, being able to he, doing what he was able to do with those, uh, a limited amount of time, you know, it's uh, kind of impressive what he did. Thank you. 
Okay, next question will come from Teresa Rugnett. Hey, Jaden, good to hear from you. I'm just curious, how much are you still in touch with your guys like Eno and Brandon Ayuk? And what kind of messages have you exchanged, especially Brandon? He's had a couple big games for the 49ers. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I talked to Eno here and there, but me and uh, Brandon, that's just a, a relationship we built. I talk to him most of the time. I would say, like, every other day uh, we talk. We're on FaceTime just talking and uh, asking him how it is out there, how he's living. He's asking me how I'm living. Just those conversations, that's the relationship we built over time that we that he was here. And, uh, like, that's, that's my big brother. Like, I, I say blood couldn't make us any closer. But, you know, seeing him succeed and fulfilling his dream out uh, makes me happy. I know he can't wait till we were able to play and he's able to see me play too. And Jaden, a uh, non-football related question, but I've been pulling and asking. Herm said Reese's are his favorite Halloween candy. What is your favorite Halloween candy? I'm a Reese's guy too. Thank you. That's a good answer. Uh, we'll go to uh, Tony Saracusa, last word on college football. Hey, uh, Jaden, let's talk about that first game against USC that's going to be early in the morning now a couple of weeks ago Herm said it doesn't bother him because when you get to be his age you got to wake up every hour anyway to make sure you still can wake up but he said it might be tougher for you younger guys to have to go to bed early on a Friday night and be ready to play on a Saturday morning like that what's your take on those nine o'clock games I mean we practice we practice around nine ten o'clock each and every day so I feel like we shouldn't be out of out of routine of when we're when we're going to sleep and when we're able to get up, I mean it's an earlier game, but we practice in the morning, so I mean we should, it just should be the same routine for us. Now, for quick follow up: since you guys have not been playing, you've had a little bit of downtime. Have you been watching much college football on TV on Saturdays? And what's yeah, your takeaway yeah. from what you've seen? Uh, most definitely, I, I I watch football all the time. It's one thing, you know, Saturday, Sundays, Monday night football, Thursday night football. Uh, just being able to watch football, but uh, watching this college game, I'm able to watch guys. I'm very interested in watching the guys that, that are in my class, you know, Spencer Rattler, Bo Nick, Sam Howe, just seeing what those guys are doing so far. Um, just happy for their success. Uh, just happy to see them uh, keep balling out. You know, just always watching football, just watching watching games, you know. I go watch games with uh, my roommates, watch games with uh, Trim Borgay. So, you know, just those type of things that we always watch football. Thanks. Okay, next question will go to Dirk Fesser, Deseret News. Jaden, appreciate the time. Uh, how do you handicap the Pac-12? I mean, um, just it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, physicality, a lot of speed. It's a lot of talent on the South. I feel like. The South is wide open. Uh, but anybody can win it. You know, you got uh, talent here. You know, USC is always going to be talent. Utah is always a physical team. Can never sleep on Colorado or Arizona, what they do. So I feel like the Pac-12 is just wide open. Hi, Jaden. I'm from uh, ASU Cronkite News. Sorry about that. Um, I My question is a little bit of a topic shift here. Um, this ASU and uh, other colleges across the state have put in initiatives in place regarding the upcoming election. And um, I just want to know why it's important for you to um, vote as well as use your platform to encourage other student athletes and members of the community to vote. I mean, it's important for me to vote. So, um... We can see world. We can see change in the world. Uh, we, like myself, other people on the team, we have a voice in the world. Um, even across the country, you know, student athletes have a voice to, to voice their opinion. I just feel like we want change in the world. Then we got to vote, and then we did that. We all, as a team, registered to vote. So just when the time is coming, don't be able to vote. Uh, just make the change that we need to, that we need so we can improve the world in the upcoming years. And also you talk, you said this, that to speak and use your platform as well too. 
Um, why is it important for you to use your platform as well as to support your teammates that choose to speak out about the social injustice? I mean, me using my platform, uh, there's, a, there's certain things that I, I feel like I can say um, and the, the people across the world can see that um, there's a lot of just impactive things that student athletes say that people might not people might not see it sometimes take for granted what the student athletes say. So they see a lot of student athletes voicing their opinions and supporting each other. And then I feel like there's going to be, there's going to be no reason, but to force them to change. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll go to our next question from Dennis Freeman news for us online. Hey, Jaden, when you talk about change, what is it? specifically that you would like to see change yourself personally? I mean, just social injustice, uh, police brutality, things like that. I feel like there's, there's a lot of uh, pro police brutality that's going on in the world. Um, and there's a lot of things that, that are still getting let by when it's not, not okay. Um, just me being a, a African-American world, you know, I feel like we should me and other student athletes are, are black and shouldn't be able, should, shouldn't be scared to walk outside with their hood on and knowing something might happen. It shouldn't, uh, I feel like parents shouldn't worry about their kids when they go out to hang out. They're always gonna worry about, I feel like they shouldn't worry about, oh, is my son gonna make it back home or just, just stuff like that. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to polling the media for any questions. If you do have one, please use the raise hand function to get into the queue. And we'll go back to Paul Richardson, the sports game. Hey, Jake, just real quick. You said you watch football Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whenever. What pro quarterback or quarterbacks do you just enjoy watching in their style of play? I mean, my... Uh... My favorite quarterback to watch is Deshaun Watson, but recently I've been watching a lot of Kyler Murray. Uh, I like what Dak Prescott was doing before he got hurt. Prayers up to him. Um, you know, Russell Wilson setting him on fire. And, you know, he always got the, the technicians with Aaron Rodgers, those type of guys. So just seeing what they could do uh, and see how they play football and uh, using using the, what I watch on film, using it in different type of ways. Thank you. My boy DTR was good with you. Okay, uh, I think that's all we have time for, and that's all the questions that we have in the queue. So, Jaden, appreciate you taking the time this afternoon, and best of luck this season. Thank you.